Tom 362 people, this is Dr. Swanson. I see by looking at our discussion, we have some issues with news releases. So I want to take a few minutes and talk to you about news releases. It's really, really important. This is like a bedrock concept in public relations, a bedrock concept, a bedrock tool. you got to understand this. And if you don't understand this, you're going to struggle with everything else. So let me lay out for you very quickly the relationship between journalists and PR people. I've been both, okay? And when I say journalists, I mean journalists, media people, TV, radio, broadcasting, social media influencers, all of them, all of those people. Public relations people are here to help those people do their jobs. Public relations people are here to feed them information about newsworthy stories so they can publicize those stories and help us. Their publicizing of the stories is called uh, third-party endorsement. And what that means is a story is more credible to you if you see it in news. An idea is more credible to you if you see it in news. Because we all see ideas in advertising, and what do we say? Eh, it's just advertising. Eh. But when we see it in news, in entertainment, in social media, a third party is endorsing that idea. The third party is the gatekeeper. If the gatekeeper runs your news release in a magazine, newspaper, they use it on TV, they use it on radio, they use it in social media, they use your ideas, that's third party endorsement. And the audience you're trying to reach is going to be more impressed by that because they will see it as more credible. So the job of journalists is to, and media people, is to disseminate information, to reach an audience, to build an audience. The job is also to make money, but that's another story for another day. The job of PR people is to give them the information they need to be helpers. We are here to help them. We are not here to demand. We are not here to push. We are not here to be obnoxious. I don't care what you saw on Sex in the City. Samantha is not, <laughs> that's not a real PR person, okay? That's not what PR people do. And I don't care what you've seen in movies about PR people. That's not what they do. We are here to be helpful and to get clients stories our clients back there the information they gave us ends up in a news release we want to get that into the news and we want to be helpful as we do it we do not get pushy we do not call up the media people and say did you use my news release are you going to use my news release did you like my news release you'll get hung up on media people don't want to take calls like that and they will qu quickly brand you as obnoxious and they're done with you so it may not sound fair from your perspective, but we feed information to the news media people and then we stand back and we wait and watch. You want to know if they knew, used your news release? Watch. Watch their news program. Read the newspaper. Read the magazine. Watch. And then you'll know if it got used. But don't call them up. Don't ask them. Don't get pushy. Don't go into the office. Don't bring them a gift because... Journalists don't like that. They, they see that as pushiness. They don't like it. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back many years and give you an example of what a successful news release shared with the media can look like. Share. This is, this is a new laptop. I just got it. So it's, it's, it's still getting to, to, to know Zoom. All right. 1991, this was back before you were born, okay? It may have even been before your parents were born. I was working in a PR agency, and we had a client, and the client was Topographic Mapping Company. And Topographic is a company that maps pipelines. They look for old abandoned pipelines to find where they are. It's a service. Oklahoma has got pipelines everywhere, and, and a lot of them were laid many years ago. People don't know where they are. So you hire Topographic to go out and look for your pipeline. So we were doing a PR project for Topographic, and we were 
at a table, a round table, kicking around new ideas. And, you know, we were looking for something that, that would be of interest. And the, the people at Topographic said, I don't know, I suppose we could talk about the thousand mile walk. And we were like, thousand mile walk? Tell me more. Thousand miles? Tell me more. So they, they started, yeah, we, we sent these guys on a walk looking for some pipelines and they couldn't drive and they had to walk a thousand miles because the pipes were all buried in places where there were no roads. And we were like, oh my God, this is a news story. This is a news story. And, and the client was like, really? You know, they had no idea because clients don't understand PR. So anyway, I went out and interviewed the guys that did the thousand mile walk. And this was like November. Okay. They did the walk months ago, but we were going to still make a story out of it. So I went out and interviewed them and I wrote up a news release after an extensive interview of these guys of their project and how it went. This is a feature news release. It's a multi-page news release. I talk all about the thousand mile walk, where they went, what they did. Look at this. Uh, you know, it was mighty hot in July and August. I talked about all of that. I got the graphics department working. I said, give me a map. We need a map. So they put together, this is where they walked. Uh, you want to talk about lonely territory? Well, listen, if you've ever been, ever been to Western Oklahoma, this is lonely territory. It's like miles between towns farmhouses it's it's so remote it's like way out there and there's no roads out there where these guys walk we did it we did a map oh we did it three column size for three column newspapers we did a two column size we did a one column size the people in graphics were great now keep in mind this was back before social media this was back in the ancient days uh and so i i said we need a picture so i got the guys now this is november it's cold We'd had them take off their jackets and stand out here in T-shirts with their map and a marker and the and the devices they use. We took a picture. Jack Fick and Steve Banks. There they are. Those are the guys who walk a thousand miles. They wore out shoes on this walk. They walked so far. So we put this all together in a news release. November 21st is when we sent it out. Have any idea what happens right around November 21st? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Is there a lot of news happening around Thanksgiving? Nope, there isn't. That's why we sent it out at this time. And let me scroll down here again. We started with the little small town newspapers and the weeklies in these counties. That's where we started. We sent it out there because that was the people most affected by this. And uh, so we're going to stop the share on this. So that's the news release that we sent out. Now, keep in mind, we sent it out around Thanksgiving. Here are some of the places where that feature news release got used. And most of these it was used verbatim. They put it into the paper exactly the way I wrote it. Anadarko Daily News. You've probably never read this newspaper, but it's out there. And they used the picture. And they used the map. Uh, Daily Oklahoma, and that's the, that's the Oklahoma City newspaper. They didn't use it exactly the way I wrote it. They actually sent a reporter out to talk to these guys and take another picture. Pipeline Digest. This was a magazine, an industry magazine that we sent it to. We sent it to later, after the newspapers in Oklahoma had, had chewed on the story. We sent it to Pipeline Digest. They used it. Um, back to November. This is Chickasha, Oklahoma. It's a little town south of Oklahoma City. They used it. Oh, and I might add, this paper here, Anadarko Daily News, that was front page. Feature news release, front page of the paper. On Thanksgiving, the day everybody stays home to eat food and read the paper. Yeah, you can thank me later. Uh, I mean, um, continuing, um, this one was Watonga. This one was Enid, Oklahoma. I mean, at, 
This one was Lubbock. It went as far as Lubbock. Now, this was January. This was in like our third flight of sending these out. We sent them out starting with the local papers. Then we moved out and more and more and more. And, and, and you know, and uh, there is the Daily Oklahoma. And again, I mean, this story, journalists talk about a story gets legs. This story got legs. It went everywhere. I mean, I was all of uh, how old was I then? 29. I think I was like 29 years old then. And it's like, this blew my mind. Um, the story went everywhere. To the point where in future meetings with the client, we'd be sitting around the table and the client reps would be going, oh God, just don't talk about the thousand mile walk. Everybody we run into talks about the thousand mile walk. We hear it everywhere. We're sick of hearing about the thousand mile walk. And it's like, the client that paid us to do public relations for them got such great response off of one feature news release that they were sick of hearing about it because everybody they ran into was talking about it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's public relations. All right, now, admittedly, this is, this is an unusual story. It happened many years ago. Where the when the media world was not as big and developed as it is today, but this is like, this is what we live for. This is what we live for in the public relations field. So back to our class. It all starts with a news release. When you write a news release, you have to be writing about something newsworthy, relevant, reasonably current. We had to make this current because it was well after the walk happened, but we did it. Um, you're writing about something newsworthy and you are writing information that is ready to be released. You never write a news release about private confidential information. You never write a news release about stuff that it shouldn't be publicized. You never write a news release without get, getting the clients okay on it. You're writing about newsworthy information that you want to see turned into a story in the newspaper, on TV, on the radio, social media, on the web. You want to see that be a story. And you are writing a news release with the thought in mind of who you are sending it to. Because if you don't think about that, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have a connection there. You need to think about what journalists, journalists and media people want. They want you to help them do their job. In 1991, journalists were not nearly as busy as they are today. Journalists today have all kinds of obligations. There are fewer newspapers. There are fewer journalists. There is more competition. All journalists are writing for the web in addition to everything else they do. They are busy, busy, busy. If you can give them something that will help them do their job, they will be very appreciative. As long as you are polite about it and you recognize they are in the driver's seat, you are not. You give them this information with the hope that they will use it, but you never call them and say, did you use my news release? When are you going to use my news release? Did you like my news release? Do you want another news release? Don't do that. You will be dead to them if you do that. Seems unfair, but that's how it works. So that is, in a nutshell, what a news release is, how you use it, how media people think, and an example, admittedly, from many years ago of what a really successful news release can do. In this case, a feature news release. And we wrote it that way specifically because I wanted it to be used as a feature story, complete. And we timed it to have the first flight of these go out right before Thanksgiving. Perfect timing. And then... January, December and January are slow months anyway. So that's why we continued sending this thing out to further and further out to get more attention. And we got it. And I hope that someday in your career, a client comes to you about something really good that you did. And the client says, oh, my God, I am so sick of hearing about this. <laughs> That'll make you feel real good like it did me. I'm still talking about it 30 years later. So, hey. All right. Do we understand the concepts? Go to the book. Make sure you've read the sections in the book. There will be questions about these issues on the quiz. 
So I want to make sure that you very strongly understand the concepts and the hands-on things that go behind a news release. Because if you can do the news release well, you can do anything well in public relations. If you can't do the news release well, you're going to struggle with everything. I welcome your questions at any time. Thank you very much.